Okay, recording. Uh, welcome to GUI and in web browsers and browsers and connectivity weekly call uh, for 5th of February 2020. We have pretty nice symmetrical grid of folks. And maybe I'll share my screen, show my uh, hotspot. So the first item on the agenda is IPFS desktop. If uh, feel free to add uh, uh, add your items uh, while I cover this one. It's mostly a public service announcement. Uh, we've released a new version, a patch back fix version of uh, IPFS desktop. There are no functional changes compared to the previous one, apart from adding three new uh, locals for new languages and uh, bumping up uh, versions of web UI and uh, Go IPFS, which ship with uh, IPFS desktop. Uh, so if you have it installed on macOS or Linux uh, you, uh, or Windows, you should uh, get uh, automatically updated to this new version. Uh, otherwise, uh, you probably will get it soon by your package manager uh, of your choice. I believe that's, that's the announcement. Uh, update as soon as possible. There are some uh, performance uh, uh, fixes, especially in web UI. Uh, the peer screen should work much better now. Uh, and related to IPFS desktop, there's an ongoing uh, problem on macOS Catalina where uh, the notarization uh, process, uh, there's a notarization process where uh, a developer uploads a binary or like this image with the app and that specific blob gets blessed by Apple. Uh, and in the future when uh, a Mac machine is trying to install or run uh, that blob, uh, it either has uh, additional manifest stapled on top of that binary or uh, the mac os itself is probably like hashing it and sending uh, that to home asking is this okay to run uh, that's my understanding i'm not a mac user so <laughs> however i feel that's more or less how it works and the problem is so far it was optional however in uh, mac os catalina it became uh, mandatory so the that's why people get this warning that uh, Apple, Apple cannot check it for malicious software. That means it's not like notarized. And I sort of did some research on what we could do to uh, plug a notarization into existing uh, uh, continuous integration uh, infrastructure we already use for releases. Um, and there is a way of manually notarizing already released uh, versions. So I believe we could try that. However, I was not able to track who is the owner of like protocol labs uh, keys. Um, I believe uh, that uh, more or less where we are with this right now. Um, if anyone using Mac has more, anything to add on top of that, I would appreciate it. Uh, it's just really confusing. Um, PFS desktop, uh, the icon in your in the finder, and you double click on it, then it pops up a different one. It says like, "Oh, do you still want to open this?" But if you try and open it from like um, using Spotlight, the search, then it just goes, "Nope, can't open this. You need to update it," which is where the confusing part comes in because it is the latest version. It's just that what Apple means is you need uh, to get a notarized version of it. Uh, so uh, does that mean like you can, like the workaround is to install it from Fider or am I like misunderstanding this? That's the, to be able to open it. Yeah. Uh, you need to try and open it directly from 
the finder by double clicking on the icon you can't open it like from the disk image or from search or from the um the bar at the bottom which i forget what they call that uh but for most regular people you can turn the whole thing off for catalina but you have to go in the terminal and type some stuff it's not going to work for regular humans um and it it's not exactly clear how it like mac os doesn't make it clear what's going on at all it's not like uh it's a, a security system that's put in yeah i think the 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 only thing to do here is try to close this as soon as possible to reduce the window in time that regular people use the target the pivots desktop non-technical users that they'll reduce the window in time that they'll experience this sounds yeah. like Lytle, you have it most of the way there. Uh, automating it would be great if, if um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Electric could probably help just ask Electric for the, go get the keys to the Apple account. or will tell you at least who has them. Yep. Uh, yeah, we, we'll see which one is faster, either doing it automatically or finding someone with Mac. Xcode and all this. Well, I, I think there's there's two bits there, right? Like so for the for the automation, we want all that done in the cloud, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, like we can uh, easily make a new release. Okay. Yeah. And instead of, I feel it may take the same amount of time, maybe even, <laughs> but probably the similar amount of time. And if we focus on automation, it will yeah. fix once. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or, um, for um, yeah. this actually has to do with my my question at the end of the IPFS desktop agenda. Last page. All right. Uh, the, uh, I only have one uh, additional uh, side note uh, around IPFS desktop. While I was uh, like doing regression tests, mm -hmm. uh, I noted that uh, drag and drop uploads in uh, into Web UI of a folder, so like multiple files in a directory tree uh, that's been broken not in not only in this release but also in previous one so i did not like block release due to that uh, but it's a problematic space because it's um, i think there are multiple bugs around that and also the pro it's the only thing that we don't have end-to-end -end tests for like for drag and drop and for uh, like directory uploads because the orchestration APIs for um, Puppet, uh, Puppeteer, uh, like uh, the, the APIs are not just there. Uh, we test multiple files on a flat structure. However, if you like drag and want to upload drag and drag and drop a directory tree, uh, we did not, uh, we don't have a test for that. So that, that's, that's a tricky space. Um, and going to the final end-to-end um, -end test. Oh gosh, don't do that to me. Don't add the agenda. <laughs> um, uh, oh yeah, end-to-end -end tests uh, landed in Go IPFS. The the PR in JS IPFS is green. I believe uh, it's not uh, merged to JS IPFS only because they are finalizing uh, the refactor stuff um, and probably that would like, introduce some noise. Maybe we need to uh, tweak this a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I said, and to, and the problem is that the, uh, those drag and drop sp uh, is specific to m Electron running in, on Mac. And there's a separate bug, I, th I believe, in Web UI. Uh, which we also don't have tests for because we don't have orchestration for that. Um, this, this might be something where <clears throat> we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a whole bunch of stuff like this in Firefox that we just had manual test cases set up for. And then we just had a web page where people could go and check whether they ran those ma manual test cases on each one of the tier one operating systems that we supported. So this might be a thing where we can actually just set something up and then drop it in the IPFS IRC channel and free node, be like, new beta of desktops out, can you test it? And then we get people to just check the box, like, yep, I ran this manual tests of these things that are hard to automate uh, and you just use some people power there. With There's like, what, 258,000 people in the IRC channel, IPFS on free nodes, so. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, I already uh, sort of added something like that for uh, the, the release process of uh, IPFS desktop to uh, do explicit manual smoke tests uh, on Mac, uh, Windows, and like Linux. I run Linux, so uh, but uh, like so many versions and configurations. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. Who's doing this work? Great question. <laughs> Uh, just before we move on for the end-to-end -end test bit, I, that was actually, I was just specifically asking about whether those end-to-end -end tests exercise the, with the web UI in abs, like uh, absent of a deployment channel or if they actually run Electron. I know we talked about Puppeteer for running it in browser, but if, if we can, because I know we have CI for Electron tests, right? So if we could set up an end-to-end -end that also runs in, elect, runs in, kind of runs desktop, but I know that the way that desktop is as an application is also very operating system specific. So runs as a menu bar app, for example. Yeah, we have end-to-end -end tests in uh, IPFS desktop repo, but those tests are specific to like GUI app desktop applications. So it's like, yeah, you start it, you confirm the, like the window, when you click on the icon, you confirm the window with web UI shown and stuff like that. Uh, we don't run uh, like web UI. And plugging yeah. in those web, uh, web UI end-to-end -end tests into this is tricky because we would not be testing uh, web UI running in Electron. We would be uh, testing it over HTTP API. <laughs> right. So uh, it's tricky. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe this is just this is another candidate for, for a community testing approach. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think it's like uh, pretty like the list of those manual tests could be pretty small uh, for people just yep. to open. And then it's the just ha have a GitHub action where as soon as we ship something, a release called beta, it just chirps in the Freenode channel in IRC. Yep. Please test me. Um, uh, so yeah, the next yeah. question I had was who's doing this work? So uh, for those of you who are new to this meeting, uh, which is a whole bunch of you, uh, let, we had Hack DS for a long time, who was here kind of pushing forward ownership of, of desktop, Web UI, adding features, fixing bugs, shipping releases. Uh, but, but Hack has moved on to TestGround project, which means we no longer have him here doing this. We have a little couple hours a week, but uh, honestly not a lot because he's splitting that with school and he's already part time, half time anyway. Uh, so Lytle has generously stepped up to the gap and helped fix some of these emergency level issues, but that's not really sustainable going forward. We need you to be able to focus on browser work. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, I'm gonna be talking to Moxie, Fabio, about um, how, uh, find, and about possibly somebody jumping in here to kind of like take on long-term engineering ownership. But also if, it, if people know people who are uh, really qualified uh, Electron JS engineers who might be a good fit, who are interested in taking on like maybe eight hours per week or something like that, or maybe even growing that over time uh, of, of doing kind of like the release and maintenance work for IPFS desktop, that doing the kind of stuff that we just talked about over the last 10, min 10 minutes, uh, let me know. Feel free to send me any recommendations you have. And then I'm also going to reach out. I'm talking to Moxie about another, another role as well. So I'll be having okay, a conversation. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll see if I know someone that is looking for a challenge like that. And if, cool. I, if I know, I, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And I, yeah, I think I'm talking to, um, to Marco, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Marco. Okay. Cool. Uh, just like uh, as a closing note on IPFS desktop, uh, we th those are like download counts per uh, platform specific package. And we can see like the most of users are actually running Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, then the like Mac users. And actually, if you sum, sum up uh, Linux users, th those may be like, those users may represent a bigger chunk than Mac, Mac. for some reason. Um, we'll see after a week because the automatic update uh, takes some time to. Th those are only direct downloads or those also include auto update? Uh, I believe it's auto update because the auto update mechanism is fetching the same package as a release, as a install. We should, we should figure out the answer to that question for sure yeah. so that we know whether these are, are real all total numbers or not. Yep. Is, these numbers seem uh, pretty small. That's why I was curious. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that. That's the problem. Uh, we like right now we are using uh, GitHub for like the distribution. We could switch to self-hosted solution, which could 
in turn give us a better insight. But yeah, do we have to do that anyway for other reasons? For uh, yes, but that's like yet another thing that would be on the plate of uh, that future meta N new, new hack. Yeah, new hack. Hack hack v two. <laughs> All right. Um, let me close some tabs. <laughs> um, next. Uh, Gosh, uh, next, uh, registering URI and URM. It's uh, also like a PSA from me, just to indicate that uh, there's some going work on uh, preparing doc doc docs and uh, uh, applying for a registration of IPFS URI scheme at INIA. And a, and uh, there is a discussion which I felt that it's valuable in that it summarizes the history, uh, the current state of how IPFS console slash URL is probably the most adopted thing when we talk about those things, and then. Uh, the less popular dweb one uh, dweb experiment which did not get traction for probably good reasons and then uh some questions uh like arguments people had up against it and finally uh johnny is helping us with uh like writing ipfs uri scheme application and as a part of that i sort of asked uh could we should we also register urn uh, URNs are a sort of interesting thing that could be uh, used in parallel. Uh, those are used by things like uh, uh, RFCs, also uh, like the, the book, the unique book <laughs> set, uh, identifiers, uh, also uh, in magnet URIs. Uh, the magnet URIs are using uh, URNs as well. So it probably would not hurt to, uh, while we are registering URL, URIs uh, and getting URLs as well, uh, also like just making sure we have a name in the URN space. Um, so if anyone- this is, is a, this is a really good point around why we have like browsers, yeah. connectivity, and it's, the URN space allows us to be able to have uniform addressing in other contexts that are not web browsers. And we love, in this group, we've been focused on web browsers, but having this escape hatch for other addressing types uh, or embedding in other systems is really interesting. We're, we're not always going to get to decide how and where things are integrated into systems, but having this as kind of a building block for, for guidance for that at, I guess the, the lowest level of, of addressing would be really useful. Yeah. And is, the, also, is the application the same? Like, do we apply for both through that same draft document? Uh, no, uh, there are separate uh, pages uh, and separate registration processes. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree. And uh, it will probably ease some adoption in, 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 in some places where they are already using URNs for identifying content. Um, like semantic web like solutions. So uh, it's good to give people that option, I believe. Um, I, that's it uh, on this one. I linked the uh, issue on the notes. If someone wants to follow. Maybe uh, we should, uh, should we invite Mr. Crunch to join this meeting if he's that's interested? That's a great idea. <laughs> we should, uh, we'll do. Um, all right, uh, just wanted to briefly mention we are in the process of uh, figuring out OKRs for browsers and connectivity uh, group. Uh, there are some solid ones and uh, mostly drafts. Uh, I'm not sure if we want to spend time uh, on this call or uh, just... I Address I, this. I would really appreciate it if we spent time on this call since we still have a bunch of time to walk through each one of these and uh, whoever owns it talk a, for a minute or two about it because I think us as a group having better understanding of, of the relative importance of these 
and also the chances of these P1s and P2s actually happening or not, what are the repercussions if they don't happen? Yep, right. So I start because I wrote <laughs> four. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the P0 for me in this quarter is delivering subdomain gateways to IPFS ecosystem. And that means uh, IP, uh, subdomain gateways being natively supported by GoIPFS, JSIPFS, IPFS Companion, uh, updating docs, uh, making sure uh, the all tests are in place, uh, uh, figuring out uh, the migration path, uh, like representing existing uh, uh, dogs guidelines and stuff like that. So that's a P0. This needs to happen this quarter and the remaining ones are P1 and P2s. Um, something I would really like to do is to write like an experience report. Uh, spend some time evaluating existing uh, connectivity options for IPFS in web browser contexts like the DOM context, service worker context and uh, less popular ones and uh, produce this like an artifact which would be both a good reference for now for people who want to uh, use IPFS in that context but also uh, it probably would help us to identify some blind spots and feed that as an input for uh, the P2P roadmap. Um, not sure if this would be a separate thing. I wrote it as a separate thing uh, like basically creating uh, guides and reference uh, examples. So also like an experience report, but specifically for setting up uh, infrastructure, like private infrastructure for running JSIPFS in a web browser. And instead of using those like public default bootstrap servers, preload servers and delegate nodes, WebSocket stars and stuff like that, uh, instead provide end-to-end uh, -end, uh, answers for people who want to run their own. Uh, right now, it's either scattered around different places or not existing at all. Um, and then the final one is like consolidate all the specs related to addressing. This is like also probably will be related, like partially, partially will be done as a part of this uh, URI registration scheme. Ideally, we would clean up our specs before like submitting. Uh, that would be much better if we are linked to the one place. Uh, and that's more or less from me. Um, Vasco, do you want to? Yeah, you can re go now. Re real, real quick, yeah. I, have a, I have a couple of questions before we move forward. The, um, I, I wonder if the, the updating the specs, who are the stakeholders for updated addressing specs? Is that for browser implementers? Is that for... Uh, is that for specific work or just making what ongoing work that you know needs to happen at some point? Uh, yep, so maybe it's a wider topic. So I've been okay. tracking, <laughs> yeah, so I've been tracking this stuff around our ecosystem for a long, long time. Uh, and you can tell like over time the, the, the spec space grew and uh, we now have like separate specs which are living in the in web browsers repo and those were like specifically for talking with browser vendors however like people been using those specs which were like designed for web browsers in other places for example like ethereum uh, in ethereum ecosystem some of their specs are referring our specs for web browsers and uh, it, it gets messy uh, pretty fast and also we've been uh, revisiting our approaches over time due to like sub origin and subdomains. Uh, long story short, I think it's uh, probably just IPFS addressing, not IPFS addressing in web browsers. It needs to be like one document and there could be like a section the, this type of addressing is usually seen in web browsers but overall it it just needs to be like a generic addressing thing. Uh, so the work here is to like just take everything uh, yeah. into one document. Uh, and, and, then, and then move it to the actual specs repo. Yeah, is, and, and then in yeah. that PR, all the stakeholders from like GoIPFS, JSIPFS, uh, like, like leads for all those projects would know what are possible stakeholders on their user base. Yeah. And then we would uh, 
gather feedback in that single PR because otherwise I don't see how we can like tame this <laughs> this beast. Yeah. Okay. So that that sounds like a good P two for the the previous two. Those are kind of I feel like uh, the guidelines and reference examples is something that we should try to hand off to Johnny, and Johnny could even find a, a bounty. So like this is why we have a docs program now. Um, and, and Johnny's goal is to find people to help write this stuff up. So I think that's something where, um, especially since it's a P2, I can, I'd say reach out to Johnny and make sure that an issue gets filed for this in, in docs queue. Uh, and then it might be something that, you know, that's time that you can get back to spend on other higher priority issues. Uh, but this might be able to move forward, even if you're focused on CID and subdomain. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, yep. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, it's yeah. It's need to ha it needs to happen. However, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I again that one. Um, so is this about what we've been talking about? How it's uh, un unclear which connectivity options work, what capabilities yep. they provide. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think especially I need to do this. This would be super important. <laughs> especially if like, I need to do this for myself to understand what works and what does not work after like async refactor. <laughs> yes, very much need this. Great. <laughs> yeah, so that's like. <laughs> All right, Vasco. All right, so regarding the first one on the spreadsheet, the PSRV2. Uh, basically, we started to make some improvements on this during uh, the famous uh, async refactor. Basically, during the refactor, we renamed the uh, old peer book into peer store to match uh, what uh, Go had before. And uh, we also moved that into the JSL P2P code base and uh, started adding some new functionalities. But now, as uh, this was kind of the groundwork to reach the peer store v2, uh, which will probably have uh, uh, persistence. We might also consider peer weighting, among other things. Uh, but for this, I will also need to push the spec forward. Uh, as a note in the spreadsheet, basically, there is currently an issue with some discussions around this, uh, with also the, the Go team, as the Go team will also uh, go to, imp to implement the peer survey to in their side. So uh, we will need to uh, or, I, or I will start by getting a proof of concept, or we will need to uh, get an agreement uh, with everyone in order to move uh, move forward with the V2 of PeerStore. Uh, other going to the um, keychain one. Uh, basically, uh, I already also started working uh, a little bit on this in the keychain. Uh, basically, we want to move it uh, under the JSLibitP code base and the API. Uh, with supporting uh, of the peer IDs persistence from the peer survey too. Uh, so basically now um, the Libit PK chain is used by JSIPFS, but it's completely external to JSLibitP in a way that it's JSIPFS who controls and does everything in the key chain. And basically it is called the Libit PK chain, but uh, it's not Libit P who manages it, which is kind of wrong. Uh, other than that, and uh, my most important task, and the one that I'm uh, currently focused on, the Liquid P Stardust. Uh, basically, we aim to sunset the um, WebSocket star, uh, which we already didn't uh, refactor to the Syncoid stuff. So basically, we need an alternative to the WebRTC star transport as soon as possible, and uh, the Stardust will be this piece, and uh, then we will try to with the other stuff like uh, Jacob will will be working on the distributed signal, and that's it. I, I had a question that when you say persistent peer IDs, does that mean that we persist peer IDs over instances of like are we actually persisting uh, those peer IDs and then reusing them when the, we spin the node back up? No, so we are. We are not doing that, but the goal would be to do something like that, yes. Because we, uh, ideally, we would probably want to uh, persist the uh, peer addresses and uh, eventually uh, get weights for which were the peers that uh, we were connected before that were more important for us and uh, try to establish metrics that uh, 
make us able to initially discover more peers and the peers that are really meaningful for us. And yeah, is, and is that something that's already implemented in Go IPFS and we're just implementing that in, in JS or Go libp2p and then we're implementing it in JS now? Or is that kind of TBD in both? Uh, I'm not sure if they persist it yet, but it's uh, TBD in both this new version of the peer store v2. So something worth noting, JS IPFS does this because it includes the BDP keychain and then hooks it up to the JS IPFS repo. So ultimately what we're doing is like shortcutting that so the PDB just handles it out of the box. So this uh, uh, means that JS IPFS has to know a little bit less detail about all of the network stack hookup and connections and all that stuff. It yeah. can just hand that off to JS PDB and manage itself. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about uh, this work as well. Uh, so we stop relying on uh, Bootstrap as a single point of failure every time our nodes start. Um, cool. Jacob? Yeah, for me, it's really getting the distributed signaling um, spec kind of nailed down. Right now, it's very, very open. Um, and then direct connection upgrading and then create a proof of concept of that for the WebRTC. And so that will give us a nice overhaul of the WebRTC star because um, that didn't get a significant. We didn't significantly update that when we were doing the refactor is just enough to get it working with refactor. Um, so this will do an overhaul and hopefully make that more efficient as well. Um, the big thing here is getting us direct browser to browser um, connections over any um, intermediary peer. So, and in theory, as long as you are mutually connected to a peer, you would be able to use them as a signaler. So in theory, three browser nodes could, browser node could use another browser node that they're mutually connected to, to connect to one another. So it's good stuff. Really good stuff. Magical. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all taking the time to write these up and put these in here and uh, uh, being patient with my many questions about how this stuff works. I'm super excited to see more progress on our connectivity stuff. I think that connectivity map to uh, Lytle is going to really help. We just had a conversation with, with Microsoft yesterday about their use of JSIPFS. And there really is just a lot of kind of ambient confusion around which connection types are used and under what situations and why, what our defaults mean, how to optimize, uh, how to optimize for specific types of clients and connection types. So uh, this work to both like collapse and, and make more cohesive how, what the connection is and is boundaries between IPFS and JSLIP P2P will help, but also the, the work that you're doing light all around what, what the, the map of what those connection types are, when they're used, how they're used under what situations this could really help as well. Like they were like, sometimes the connection is fast and we don't know why. And sometimes it's slow, but we don't know why. And they don't, just don't even know what, what route was used. If somebody asked for a CID from the gateway that they got from the Bitcoin blockchain and they asked the gateway, but they're running nodes. They were like, sometimes it works instantly and other times it takes days. But, and, and we have answers to that if we know how right, all, all that stuff works. But for somebody who's just an IPFS user that's deploying some nodes, they, they don't have great visibility into all that stuff. Yeah, and it also like makes better bug reports if people have more context. We often spend a lot of time asking people for stuff that they could like just initially write down. So I feel it would help with that as well. Um, cool. Uh, do we know uh, uh, what's like the deadline for finalizing our OKRs? Uh, I think this is where, you know, because there was an org switch kind of rearranged at the beginning, the idea was for now, everybody just get their most important thing this quarter in. We'll talk about it a little more in team week. I think you consider these, consider what you put in your finalization of the work that you were taking on this quarter. Um, uh, and then when we're at team week, we'll probably spend some more time going through and making sure that this is the most important thing. There's not other things that happen or trade-offs that we need to make. But uh, at this point, you know, we, you know, especially in, in this group, I'm, I'm trusting that you all know what the most important thing and that you have talked in, in this meeting or, or other places around making sure that, that the, this priority order is right. And I think from the work that you and I did, Lytle, with Hugo last year, where from a browser's perspective, 
we like kind of stack ranked every possible thing that we knew we wanted to do with regard to browsers and all of the connectivity stuff bumped up to the top, which is part of what prompted this closer alignment between JSLib P2P and, and the browser work. Um, so it, I think you know, all this seems to align directly with what, what we did in the prioritization exercise in whenever that was last fall. Uh, so, so that seems generally right. Uh, and then I know part of it, you know, I, I brought this up at the IPFS uh, leads meeting yesterday too, is that we have to do that with an understanding that Jacob and Vashko also have other things that might trade off against it for their lib P2P work that might be higher priority than our longer term browser stuff. So this is a attempt at accelerating some of that stuff, but also with an understanding that you also have a loyalty to a whole different area of, of consumers of lib P2P stack. But hopefully we'll, I think we're planning to spend some time at Teamwork as well, like working through and organizing and actually getting that backlog so that we can improve that visibility into where we're at with certain things. Awesome. So I think like what we, we talked about before that earlier this week uh, about just marking your micro marking the priorities. If it's P zero, then we know to expect it from you this quarter. If it's not P zero, then we know that it's going to trade off against other stuff and, and, and that it, it, it's, a, it's a maybe for this quarter. Yeah, and that should and that be up to date like, now, I think. Enough. Awesome, yeah. thank you. All right, uh, next one I suspect is Zutrix. Oh yeah, I just had that summary there. We talked a little bit about this in the ecosystem meeting, but if, the, if there's any changes that you have kind of for how we describe the special interest group, I think at, at our team week and our mystery location, we will talk more as a group about how, uh, where, where we share this information and how we kind of formalize the, this as a special interest groups. And special interest groups are still kind of new. I think emerged partway through last year um, as a alternative form of working group. Uh, but if you have any input on thoughts on, on that stuff, let me know. I also added that last agenda item. Uh, Lytle and I met with Agalia. We talked about um, kind of what, like, what the long slow pathway to native Chromium implementation would be. Uh, they do, they're a consultancy that they do work and they have commit rights on WebKit, Gecko, and Chromium repos. Uh, they do a lot of stuff around embedding for people. They've built features like CSS grid and added them to, to browsers. Um, so the, and, and MathML, things like that. So we're, we're talking with them about what some type of longer term project would look like, but in the shorter term, um, a smaller scope project we looked at was what, what, what would it take to add a, a protocol handler API so we can implement native protocol handler, not just for IPFS, but um, you know, and web, web extension extensibility API for uh, any protocol registration at, from the web extension level. So that, that's something that Lytle and you and I should, I'm not sure what the next step is there. Um, if that's something maybe we just want to talk about it at Team Week, to, we're together for an hour. If you're going to spin up at some point a, a draft of that for, I think it's, if we even just get a, a, a couple of paragraphs, like a one page, draft of that and get it into Agalia's hands and that'll be enough for them to literally start estimating what the cost would be. We don't, I, we want to, the point there is to avoid doing that work and have them do that work. So if we can just spec out either an API or point to previous examples and what the outcomes that we want to be are and specifically which browser. I think Chromium is probably first is, is what we discussed and just ign ignore the others for now because the the browsers that we're working with most closely that want to be able to implement something like this for IPFS are all Chromium based at this point. Yep, totally. Uh, it's just uh, from like the formal point of view, do we want to leverage this uh, dev grant, uh, pro one of dev grant processes for Absolutely. this? Absolutely, yeah. So, so, so I think I'll probably like start with RFP or like targeted grant and to have like, uh, deliverables and acceptance criteria coming from that, that. sounds great i think tar targeted grant is probably best because this isn't something that we want yeah. some this, this the, the the ability to have the having commit rights and already being integrated in the rendering engine communities is the superpower uh, and that, that expertise and experience of somebody like agalia so i don't think we want rando proposals for something like this and this really is a, a, going to be a targeted grant yeah just for co the context if Someone's watching this and is wondering what are dev grants? Uh, there is IPFS slash dev grants repo. It's an experimental grant platform where we uh, state uh, problems like IPFS project 
states problems which could be solved and you could apply for uh, solving those problems or you could there's a mechanism for open grants and now we are experimenting with targeted grants where uh, you can propose your own grant uh, I, there are also like smaller chunks like bounties uh, adoption micro grants if you want to include like IP, add IPFS support for your into your project but you don't have like time and resources uh, so I need to I need to file one for the next cloud support I'm like <laughs> yeah somebody to do that the whole community wants it yeah I, I believe we'll be leveraging uh, more and more uh, this process I have like a list of drafts I want to write uh, of stuff that I would like to see but like Maybe someone else will do that. that. That might be a good team week activity is everybody's got, like, I know I have a huge list of IPFS backburner projects and I'm like, well, I just had a few, some weeks I could push out some of these things and just put a file of all as adoption micro grants, like stuff that people can yeah. do for under a thousand bucks or ticket on or bounties or whatever. I'm pretty sure we have like an issues which are detailed enough to be, just spend some time and move them to a template of a grant. Maybe someone will, uh just just do that yep i believe we are at the end of the agenda we are getting better and better at this are there any ad hoc topics anyone wants to discuss questions concerns fabio would you like to introduce yourself yeah hi hi everyone uh, so my name is fabio martins i'm from moxie I recently got uh, employed by Moxie as a TPM uh, to work with with uh, Protocol Lab. Uh, my background is full stack developer uh, for almost four years, um, and I decided to go with the career of uh, pro project manager because I love the interaction between people and the communication between teams and and think uh, and try to help. Um, the team members improve their work um, and see if what we are um, developing makes sense in the user perspective. So that's it. And it, this is a big challenge for me because it's the first time that I um, work as a project manager for a remote team, um, a complete remote team. So it will be a, a big challenge for me, but I'm really excited for new, this new opportunity. And uh, uh, so um, this is why I'm I'm here in this call is because I'm I'm trying to le learn as much as I can in these first two weeks. Um, it was Ollie Evans that told me to to that invited me to to be here. Uh, I already spoke with Vasco, um, and he told me that uh, I I could uh, go to this meeting. So. That's it for me. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. If you want to see more faces, the all <laughs> like the rec recordings of public meetings yes. are on the uh, YouTube channel. YouTube, okay. Okay, okay. And the drive. I, I already have uh, permissions to the drive and I will see more videos of the recordings too. Thank you. Yep. Right. Anyone? No. Yes. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe uh, I will believe we are pretty good. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully, we'll see each other uh, next week. Bring your agenda items. Um, see you next week. Thank you. Adios.